On today's episode, it's a whole bunch of news. It's the preseason. We are breaking things down. Some takeaways that we are looking at from these teams. Who's moving up? Who's moving down? And a gigantic announcement that you do not want to miss. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy. There is a fifth dimension. Beyond that which is known to fantasy football losers. A dimension where championships flow freely and celebrations are commonplace. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, science and superstition, analytics and film. The easiest road to this place is the ultimate draft kit. Imagine stealing a breakout player while your opponent falls for another siren of catastrophe. Your preparation from over 100 player profile videos will be the difference between the pit of man's fears and the summit of knowledge. This is the dimension of Foot Clan titles. Commit this website to memory and dominate your draft. UltimateDraftKit.com Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome, man. Oh, right. okay. Okay. I would say we're back, baby. I, I mean, it's maybe not 100, but you get on the field when you're at 85, and you say, I pushed through, and you did. Let's go. kind of lost it at the very end. Yeah, I mean, uh, like a couple steps I on, know. on the dismount. I know. I was 100% not certain of what was going to happen, but I thought I was getting close. You took it to the limit. Very nice. Welcome into the podcast. And welcome into you. Yes. Yes. We well, I mean, it's ain't preseason week one anymore, Mike. That's right. It's preseason week <laughs> two and a half. Yeah, it is funny. Like is like some people say that that was preseason week three. Three, like yeah. you see it listed that way. Is that on because of the Hall of Fame? Yeah, because Hall of Fame was week one, which is dumb. It's like Hall of Fame doesn't exist. We have a great show for you. We're going to catch you up on the preseason uh, movers, shakers, what's happening, players trending in different directions, major takeaways, storylines, things to, you know, you you had some people that drafted this past week, and a lot of people with drafts still to come, and a lot of what's happening right now is going to make a difference. And your confidence level on certain players. We're going to talk about a ton of them on the show today. We've got news to talk about. We got a mailbag to jump into. And we have an announcement. It's back. Oh, baby. It is time (laughs) for the Megala Bowl. Maybe you are new. You don't know what the Megala Bowl and scared, yes, and and somehow, you know, you 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 stuck around through that right guttural that gargly goop gargly <laughs> goop. Um, no, the Megala Bowl is, we believe, the world's largest regular fantasy football league uh, to crown the true champion of fantasy football. And what we do every year is we take all of our listeners. Uh, all the Foot Clan, and we put them in a giant tournament of 12 team leagues, just like your home league, uh, with real drafts and real people. And then the playoff weeks that come at the end of the year will determine who is the true champion of all of the leagues combined with the winner getting into the 2023 Listener League. So if you're like, you don't know how to make a good submission, or right. you, maybe you've made great submissions and you know we got a 1,000 of them this year and you didn't make the cut, just be the best. Just be the best and you're in our league. Yeah, megalobowl.com. Head over there for all of the details. We had over 18,000 players play together last year. We have seen the tweets. We have seen the messages. Uh, many of you asking when when the announcement was going to come. It is here, megalobowl.com. All Foot Clan supporters receive an entry. Um, tons of other perks for supporting the show, so check that out. You can only join once, okay, so yep. one, one time. In one fact, entry. If you were to r- try to do it again, um, it will remove, it will change your draft slot. There are different draft slot days on September 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. 
So it's that, that Labor Day weekend and going right up until the day before NFL kickoff. I have already signed up, so at least 11 of y'all will be playing in one of my leagues. Not telling you which time slot. <laughs> Um, but man, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be great. I think we're going to get over twenty thousand this year, and you'll be able to pick like like Jason said, a time slot that works for you. Uh, we've made some different scoring system changes to kind of uh, upgrade the strategy, and I'm excited. And uh, Jason, you know, you did the Megalobol. Was that in honor of the new like Game of Thrones show there? Yeah, I was, was the, the dragon. You were the dragon. You are the <laughs> the dragon. Uh, so you can check that out. Megalobowl.com, the ultimate draft kit available to help you in your drafts right now at ultimate Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Well, Michael Thomas <laughs> missed practice on Sunday due to a hamstring injury. It's a, it's a little hamstring thing, a little bit hamstring. It's a little bit hamstring after a lot of bit ankle. And, yes. uh, when you're out two years on an ankle and you're approaching 30 years old and you have a hamstring injury, not early in camp, but pre we're getting closer to the season. Um, these are you a little bit worried. It's a it's a yellow light. Like it's okay. a yellow. I'm coming to the intersection. Is and this I'm the looking yellow at, light where you're actually going to go through it or are you going to? I feel like this is a pretty dangerous intersection. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to go ahead and say like. Maybe if I'm maybe if there's maybe uh, another player in the same intersection that looks nice, I might pump those brakes and let someone else go into the intersection. Chris Olave did score his, uh, his first touchdown of the preseason. Currently being drafted around the top of the ninth round, that will go up, especially if this Michael Thomas mm -hmm. uh, news percolates and misses practice. And you know there had been a lot of. Not just Michael Thomas is back, but Michael Thomas looks like the Michael Thomas of old. Yeah, I mean. Which, um, yeah, yeah no, I mean, he did, checks out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Chris Olave marching his way towards maybe number one target territory for the Saints offense. We will see. Tom Brady back in the building. So Okay, with style. <laughs> yeah, we saw some air humping. We saw some other things. But Tom Brady is back in the building going to practice today. Well, because, you know. Masked Singer wrapped up the filming. Is that the uh, – yeah, there were some crotch chops. That's what, um, the, that's what the Redditors are telling me. Whatever happened, he, he didn't come back in a bad mood. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't remember Jason ever walking in after an absence and doing some crotch chops and air humps. But it will goodness. happen yeah. after my next absence. That, I promise you. That being said well, – That's a TB12 diet. I mean, <laughs> Tom Brady is coming back into – I think he was happy because he had not yet – uh, gone under center where his offensive line in the middle is gone. Yeah. Hopefully he is uh, aware of that while he was on the Masked Singer. Uh, Ken Walker, hernia surgery. Pete Carroll doesn't know when he'll return. You could steal some weeks with uh, all Rashad Penny at the top of, you know, at the top of the season if Penny's fine and healthy. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you may get some weird uh, – <laughs> Travis Homer, DJ Dallas Weeks in Seattle. And uh, Rashad Penny, assuming that we get the, the green light, that he's all better from the uh, the, the groin injury. Yeah. But, dar, uh, but Ken Walker here, like he could miss some games, which also puts Ken Walker – I don't know where his ADP will go from here, if it'll slide back a couple rounds or not, but this puts him in the, the realm of someone that you can draft, you know, if it do, if he does fall to the ninth or so, if you want to draft him and just put him on your IR spot, I'm with that plan. Uh, Panthers rookie Matt Corral, quarterback, list Frank injury, probably season ending. Patriots rookie Tyquan Thornton, second round draft pick, collarbone injury, expected yeah. to keep him out for eight weeks. It's a bummer. He'll be irrelevant for this season at this point. Uh, we saw a very impressive Nelson Aguilar in the preseason uh, games this past weekend. It looks like Jacoby Myers, Aguilar, and Devontae Parker will be the starting wide receiver core for the Patriots. Yep. And uh, the Raiders traded away Nick Mullins. I, the only reason that this is interesting to me, the Vikings got him. It's garbage pick, a conditional, a conditional seventh rounder. But to me, and I know all teams are, we can all, you know, they tell their players, we can win. We can win the Super Bowl. 
But this is a move of your backup quarterbacks are not getting it done, and you are going – you're in. You are all in trying to make a Super Bowl push this season. So at least – that for the Vikings, yeah, like that's an it's an actionable move to me. If Nick Mullins had been the backup during the Kellen Mond week of last year, I would have a I would have a title. <laughs> Kellen there, Mond, there Kellen Mond go. did not get it done. There you go. Uh, do we have Kyle? Do we have anything else happening this morning? That's it. Are you doing well today, Kyle? I'm doing great. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Sounds that's like good. someone's well rested. <laughs> yeah, well, no crotch tops from Kyle either. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, let's get it going. Preseason power up. All right, we do have one preseason game uh, remaining for week uh, two slash three. Why? But um, look, I'm trying to be excited here about preseason football. But why? Why are we doing that? You mean the Monday night preseason? <laughs> you don't what? like Monday night football, Mike? What do you hate football, Mike? Uh, the, the NFL thinks it's just it's, <laughs> it can't be stopped. I mean, I they guess are correct. I guess the advertisers are still buying those slots up. But. I was surprised there were Sunday games eh. at all. But uh, let's let's get into yeah. some of the takeaways at each position grouping from the uh, week two games. Let's start at the quarterback position and that just amazing quarterback battle taking place in Seattle. Uh, Geno Smith, he's the only one we've seen so far. Drew Locke was going to start week two, out with COVID. Pete Carroll says he will play a lot in week three. Geno has really – he's been Geno Smith so mm -hmm. far this preseason, 10 for 18, 112 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Looked a little bit better in week one to me. Drew Locke, I mean, if he goes out there and looks great in week three, I think he can take the job. I think either guy has a loose grip on the job. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's very fair. The The expectation here is, unlike Carolina, this decision actually hasn't been made. I think they do want to see Drew Locke in there, and he has a chance to win this battle. So it's it's really TBD, which makes right now, if you're drafting, like right this second, I am in a super flex dynasty startup draft, and we're in the late rounds, and it's like, you know, where you're taking backup quarterbacks that aren't even playing and drew Locke and geno smith are both there one of these guys is playing football this year uh but it's hard to know i mean right now if you had to call it andy who would you say is the starter week one i i guess i'd say geno right now but if i'm if i'm the seattle seahawks i am trying to find some upside in this situation and i don't know which player represents that to them jimmy garoppolo <laughs> but yeah I, it's so hard to know what Pete carroll wants because he Wait, he wants run, 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 run. So right. I game manager Gino or yeah. Drew Luck with uh, some more upside for I, Metcalf. Yeah, I think that I, th I think it's going to be Gino. All right, here's here's a the player I want to talk about the most at the quarterback position. Kenny Pickett. Yeah, very strong preseason so far. Went nineteen for twenty two for one seventy one and three, no picks. Mitch Trubisky is unfortunately Mitch Trubisky. That's one of the a qualities for for who him or us or both all involved <laughs> okay. um, for him, for the Steelers, for his it, family. Like he they picked him. He can run around and then be inaccurate. That is one of Mitch Trubisky's sure skill set. So I'm just saying I think this transition is looking like a stronger possibility with the strong preseason for Kenny Pickett and. You don't have a player in Mitch Trubisky that goes out there like a Jimmy Garoppolo, right? Like last year, we're looking at that transition. Like Jimmy Garoppolo is the game manager, accuracy, you know, just do enough to win, don't do anything to get you benched. That's his MO. That's that's kind of what I would see for Geno, right? Mitch Trubisky can go out and throw five picks in one game and delete himself from the starting roster in a week. So the possibility of Pickett getting his shot sooner than later, it does exist for that super flex league where Mitch Trubisky is a late round draft pick. There's more worry there. Absolutely. I mean, you, you actually brought up a very similar case with Daniel Jones a couple months ago. And I, I think Daniel Jones is a very good comp for Mitch Trubisky. 
they have talent. You can see flashes of brilliance on the field, but they also have a knack of imploding and having a horrific game where you are the centerpiece of this loss and you are the reason you lose the game. And and so I, I do agree. If Kenny Pickett is playing well behind him in, in all of training camp um, and early on in the preseason, it you know it, it wasn't even a quarterback battle. Pickett was the third behind Mason Rudolph, and they were bringing him along slowly, and it was Trubisky's team. And you expect this team to win games. You expect you always expect the Steelers to be in it. And so you think, uh, but but you're right. At some point here, if there's a game or two games where Trubisky absolutely is the reason that they took a W and turned it into an L, I think you'll see Kenny Pickett this year. And he's the better quarterback. He's looked really, really, really good. There's a reason he was the only quarterback drafted in the first round. It's because he's a good quarterback, I believe. Yeah, and it's always difficult at times to weigh things in the preseason with who they're playing against and those things. But it's not hard to weigh the fact that Josh Rosen stinks. Because he – did you guys see Josh Rosen? No, I did not. He came in uh, and went 7 for 20 against the third stringer. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so Rosen. I no. – you know, as Cardinal fans, we have to bring that up. Yeah. Now, this next quarterback, I think, is is a much more interesting conversation. I want to bring him up uh, quite a bit. I think maybe for different reasons um, than y'all, but if you want to... Malik up, Willis. Yes. Malik Willis. Of the Tennessee Titans. The third round uh, yeah. draft pick, and I want to bring that up because this was a guy at one point in time was the betting favorite to be the number two overall pick in the NFL draft this year. He was supposed to be a first rounder. As he dropped to the back of the first round, people were wondering: Is someone going to trade up and grab Malik Willis? Because they did not. They did not. But of course, what a value on day two to draft in the second round Malik Willis, and every team said, "Nah, nah, dog, I'm good." Yeah. And then he fell to the third round, where the Tennessee Titans scooped him up, and this was a, a landing spot that um, you know, a lot of people have been wanting to replace Ryan Tannehill for a while. I think if the Titans had an opportunity to go out and get a really special quarterback, they would have done that. Uh, and falling to the third round, I don't blame them at all for taking Malik Willis. Malik Willis, as a talent, is a very, very special runner at the quarterback position. Yes. Very mobile. As a quarterback, I think he is very, very bad. I don't think he's even – close to NFL ready okay. and so I know a lot of people are looking at this preseason they see his rushing they see his mobility and they think fantasy football gold when I watched this preseason and this was when I was paying attention to when I was watching the game all I could think of is this dude is never ever ever going to be a starter unless an injury happens he's not playing his Kenny Pickett could play his way into a starting job over Trubisky based on what Trubisky does but Ryan Tannehill is a good quarterback. He drops back. He reads the the defense. He makes a good ball. He's efficient. He builds it. Uh, yes. He, yeah. he uh, man, of, he can weave a good – Out of trees. Good, good pigskin. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> out of trees. We, he makes a completely different uh, ball. So it's my a wooden football? Mike, what in the world is wrong with you? So I, I guess when I watched him, I just thought – I saw a guy that takes a couple steps back, looks, looks, is afraid to release the ball, runs, and I don't think that that's – going to get on the field so I mean that's a big you took a big dump on it yeah I mean I, I did. I'll say this if an injury happened and he had to take over I do of all the coaches staffs I I trust Mike Vrabel and company to kind of build a system that might accentuate his strengths uh, I haven't been you know obviously as a passer it hasn't been great but the athleticism has been on display I think I've been more than I've been a little more positive about the preseason play than maybe Jason as as if I, I, I he has he, he has athletic tools and like for a lot of these NFL quarterbacks that is the starting place is do they have can you shape them into being a professional NFL quarterback I don't know if he can get there but he at least has the the, the running and he uh, but he has arm talent he's just currently inaccurate yeah he had a uh, a long touchdown pass i believe in week one uh either that or a long downfield throw that i was like wow that ball just kept going and yeah. going uh let's talk about some running back situations that we've seen play out in the preseason especially 
uh, a very big one in Washington. Yes, I think that this is the biggest one. I wanted to take this one in live because look, I I love Antonio Gibson, the player. Have been like a supporter of him over the off season, and then I mean the the things have just been horrifically bad. The drum beat for Gibson has been very poor, as they took Brian Robinson in the third round, and all of the things that have happened over the last couple of weeks. So. It, I don't think we still have a final answer on what's going to happen in Washington. Antonio, I, diving into the beat reporters and them talking about it, Antonio Gibson for years has been trying to get on kick return. Like this is something that he wanted to do and he wanted to showcase what he could do because and it makes sense. So he finally got his wish and he returned the first kick. There was nothing there. I mean, in terms of blocking, so nothing really special could possibly have happened for anyone. But because you're the kick returner, like you're a bit gassed. So I don't know if it's that or is it officially Brian Robinson has supplanted Antonio Gibson as the number one runner, which it is a possibility. Well, uh, here's a couple things that I would take away from that, Mike, and I'll let you get back to what you saw in the game. One is that you don't see prolific NFL running backs – as the kick returner. That's just not – even if they beg to do it, you don't see that happen very Some, – almost ever. And almost ever, but I'll say like David Johnson for a long time returned Only before kicks. he really was the main back. And guy. Antonio Brown was a punt returner. Like big-time players who can make things happen do a, on occasion. The other thing I'll say, and Matthew Friedman tweeted this out a while back when he was pining for people to draft Brian Robinson Jr. with a higher pick than where he was going. He pointed out the Nick Saban Alabama running backs that have been drafted yes. with a top 100 pick are Mark Ingram, Trent Richardson, Eddie Lacy, TJ Yeldon, Kenyon Drake, Derrick Henry, Damian Harris, Josh Jacobs, Najee Harris. Every single one of them has had a thousand yard season at the NFL level. So wow, that's TJ Yeldon. Has? That was yes. what I just really. That, that's got to wow. be com- that's yeah. I'm no, sure it's just, combined total. Yeah. Too. Okay. But but you're talking about a long list of successful running backs, um, and obviously the team went out and got him. So I'm not saying anything about – I'm not dis, uh, nothing about what you said. Am I bringing that up as a counterpoint? I'm bringing that up because I think the biggest question on the table is where do you drop Ryan Robinson? Okay. That's the actual question to me. It's like I expect people to be wavering about Antonio Gibson and trying to get someone else in their league to take him because they're afraid. But where do you actually go in on a Brian Robinson? Is this a player that you see – having year one potential to hit those numbers that we're talking about if the things go right. I mean, Antonio Gibson surprised with 11 touchdowns in his rookie season or 10, 11, whatever it was. Could Brian Robinson hit that number this year? Yeah, so the I, I think the reality for both of these guys is that they aren't the pass catcher and they will either unfortunately split the short down goal line work or one of them will win that job. And we, we don't know for sure who it's going to be. They – each can lay claim to it should be me. And so if you want to talk ADP and disparity, they're very similar outcome players here that are being drafted worlds apart. I mean, Brian Robinson's basically almost undrafted in your home league. He's in the 15th sure. round right now, while Antonio Gibson, while falling, he gets to a spot where you're like, man, he's been a top guy, and he's in the back of the fourth or the fifth round in, in, in home leagues. So I'm not taking Gibson there. I'm fine using a double-digit pick on Brian Robinson at value. But my expectation right now is that both these guys are going to be involved. Yeah. And if both these guys are involved and J.D. McKissick has the passing downs role, I don't think any of them have a great fantasy season. Both becomes three. Exactly. Yes. My my overall out. Well said. Yeah, what, what was your both takeaway, say, Mike? My takeaway is it's this is going to be a disaster for fantasy football because Brian Robinson looked good as a runner, but it was, and he was the one who, he started the game, but then it was a true rotation of the two. We didn't have McKissick in there to know what, what, uh, oh, oh, man. Man. That's yeah, scary. you gotta be ready for that scared uh, freaking uh, out. Far out of so me. it, it, and then that's where I'm like, Oh man, if you have, well the, done. if you have the three person rotation, this is going to be brutal. But Gibson, he was mostly a pass catcher in this game and that's how he was utilized and he looked fantastic as that just as a as a gigantic weapon so it will be which it's going to be very interesting to see but as of like right now I'm probably out just on all of them that's how I feel but I'm curious 
Al, do you do you do anything else back there? Do you sit there <laughs> the whole show just waiting for the McKissick drop, or do you actually have other jobs you do? Because that was, oh man, that's that, it. Okay. I got one job and I do it well. The offensive line was worse. I know Gibson can catch passes, but it almost scares me more that 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 his job was in the game that McKissick didn't play. That was his job. Like, to but me, I mean, he, it wasn't to like, me that seems worrisome. It wasn't just third down stuff. Like he's out there running routes on first and second gotcha. down. Breaking news. We're hitting the button for this. Baker Mayfield has been announced. <gasps> Are you surprised, Jason? As the st- wait, as, as announced the star- as what? As the starter. Oh as the starter in Carolina. Goodness. Wow. Now they're they're not going to give him the rest of the first team reps though going forward, right? They still want to make sure. Got to be sure, right? Yeah, I think he, Matt Rule was finally ready to make the announcement. Let the team know what they already knew. Yeah. So, let let the go. team know what the rest of the world already knew the day you traded for Baker Mayfield. You clown. All right, uh, you've turned on him completely. Big time. I went from love to hate. There is <laughs> no, no middle ground. It's not a Matt fine Rule line. or Ooh, good, good, good Malik game. Willis. I'll take Malik Willis. He has upside with his rushing All right. Uh, back with some more running back news in just a second. All right. Let's talk about the backfield in Buffalo, which is, I, I think has become troubling uh, to the same degree that it is in Washington. Uh, Zach Moss has seemingly earned a role with his performance in camp in the preseason, if you listen to people out in, in Buffalo, it's been praise for Zach Moss, including goal line work. So you you have a situation now where Devin Singletary looks like the locked-in starting running back. Now, I watched every single snap from James Cook. Explosive, different element brought to this offense. I think he will be good on the touches he gets, but I don't know how many. And then Zach Moss as this, I mean, clog in our clarity for Buffalo. I don't know if I can draft these players. It is tough. I mean, Devin Singletary dominated down the stretch at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. We got to remember that. And he has, he looks entrenched as the first guy. Four for 39 too. He was great. He's being really, uh, I think because of more because of James Cook than because of uh, Moss, he's being left for dead in these drafts. So I don't have a problem taking Devin Singletary. Eighth round on sleeper right now. Yeah, you know, in the eighth round, you could take a shot at having the starter for um, for the Buffalo Bills. And I would say that, you know, the big difference here between, well, this might be a three-headed committee versus Washington is, okay, Washington does not have enough fantasy football output to split three ways. If you get a passing down guy or the goal line guy or the first and second down guy for the – highest scoring team that's going to run so many plays on the course of the season it's like they get an extra game or two in on the season then then yeah you could take a shot on those guys I still have a hard time believing in Zach Moss he scored two touchdowns he he was brought in two opportunities near the goal line he did it in preseason the real question here is James Cook to me he wasn't used they didn't have a lot of third downs, and if he projects to be the passing down guy, that's one thing. But my hope for James Cook was not that he is the third down guy. There's a big misnomer in football. We use the term third down back as like the guy who is the pass catching back. Most pass catching, it might shock you how little is done on third down at the running back position. Right. The pass catchers are running routes on first and second down, getting dump offs and things like that. And if he's not being utilized in that role, it's a little bit scary, but also it's preseason. Well, a couple things I'll say, and I, I'm I'm going to just say that I'm I'm kind of out on that situation in general. Like I don't want to take a shot on any of those players. You know, to the yes, it's a better offense, but yes, Josh Allen runs the ball more. Washington ran the ball 477 times last year. Buffalo ran it 433. And if you heard me say that I believed in Zach Moss, please erase that from your brain. I did not <laughs> in any way mean to insinuate that. But we know from history, you don't have to believe – we don't have to believe in them. Like if they get snaps, it's all that matters to me. So mm-hmm. it, it's a problem to me that I just don't think there's enough opportunity there to I, go around. I, I don't. 
I, I, I love that you're bringing up the rushing numbers, and this is why I've been pro James Cook of the three of these guys from this backfield. Because I think when push comes to shove and you're playing four quarters and it's all real, I want the guy who's catching passes. This is a team that's going to pass so dang much. But are they actually going to throw to the running back? If they threw to the running back 15% of the time last year. That's a bottom five number. That's a that's an atrocious and target share. And that's the question of was it a personnel thing? Yes, I agree. Or you know, a, a, a personality thing for Josh Allen? And we'll find out this season. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, is can you ever – you know, part of fantasy is projecting when could you ever start somebody. You know, it's like – do you get a chance once in four games, once in two games? You know, when are the big games coming? Um, but Singletary has been left for dead. Uh, so just to, let's tie those two situations together. Let's say Gibson falls to the eighth round, which is very possible now with the trajectory of that way things are happening. Singletary or Antonio Gibson in the eighth. Singletary, if I had to take one of those. Two. I think that's where I am now. Too. <sighs> the hard, the only thing that would persuade me the other way is just the fact that Gibson's had two hundred fifty plus carries. So the workload, you know, does Gibson break off a couple big plays and all of a sudden reestablish? I, it is possible. I don't think Singletary can do that. Like, there's nothing Singletary can do to get enough snaps away from Moss and uh, Cook, in my opinion. So I guess I'd go Gibson. Damian Pierce did not play at all in week two because head coach Lovey Smith wanted to look at other running backs. This has been, you know – conveyed as yeah you're the starter damian pierce that's how i read it so you know he had five carries in week one that's not enough to make you the starter <laughs> it has to be camp and what the head coaching you know the competition that you have i've seen the depth chart i think that's a big so, part so of it lovey smith has seen the depth chart yeah i i will say this i i do think damian pierce is the is going to be the starter sooner rather than later. Maybe not even week one, but he will win the starting job on the season. And he, rookie running backs do well. Those two things being said, I think Damian Pierce is being overhyped right now. He's getting a little out of control. He's up to the eighth round right now. He's going with you know these players we were just talking about and uh, Devin Singletary for the Bills. Damian Pierce currently is being drafted as the running back 35 that is higher than any rookie running back drafted in the fourth round of the NFL draft in the last decade. So he is like, people are hot and bothered for this guy who I believe, if he is the starter, will be in a committee for the Texans. I Like... If he needs to have the James Robinson role where he's just everything. He's the passing down. He's first, second, and you, third down guy if you're going to be on a bad team. If if they bring in Rex Burkhead for passing downs or, you know, they, they you know maybe they don't give him all the goal line, then what is the real upside here for the Texans? Uh, well, who are you taking then? Are you taking Singletary or Gibson over Damian Pierce's potential upside, Mike? Jason? Who's Mike Jason? <laughs> Um, I I would prefer the Bills' offense, so I would take Singletary. Honestly, at that point, I might take James Cook. Man, I know. I, I do not. I don't get it. No, me neither. I don't get. It. I would I would take Singletary over Pierce, but I think that, that I don't. At this point, with everything that's happening and the depth chart, I'm willing to take the shot. I get it. the the draft day capital is terrible, but I feel like he is the guy. And even if if he's in a timeshare, but he's 60 percent I mean that's that's volume at the running back position that you that is very difficult to find later in the in the draft I would take Damian Pierce over both of those over both of those players okay. because I am I am shooting for a starter give me a starting running back I don't I don't care what team he plays for is he going to be the starter is he going to get 15 carries um that's all I care about at that point and I'm shooting for a star as in, like, I don't think Damian right. Pierce can be a fantasy star on that offense. If, and you if it's think committed. James Cook can be a star? He's a second-round pick with talent who's pass-catching on one of, if not the best offense in, in football. I get it. The pathway is so clear for Damian Pierce. Like, yes. Damian Pierce will have more work than James Cook. Damian Pierce's odds to finish higher in fantasy football at the end of the season is higher than James Cook. But I think the ceiling case is what I'm saying. Is okay. The ceiling case to me is if things work out for James Cook and he ends up just demanding more and more touches as the season goes on for that offense and he's the pass catcher, I think the ceiling is higher 
But but I totally get the other case. Like I don't blame anyone and for being like oh, that's insane. Take the he's guy not who's cooking the by the book, Mike. Yeah, and, and honestly, I can I can not see where you're going. Yeah, I'm a chef. The, I don't read the rest. The, the the problem with James Cook is the only way you're going to get that James Cook is you. He's on your bench for yes. probably months as you sit and wait for it to happen. I don't know how he – give me the stat line that you see that being – like what happens for James Cook's numbers that gets you there? Because if he's – if Josh Allen and Zach Moss are the goal line, does he catch 85, 90 passes? No, I, I think this is a guy that when he's when he's going, he's on the field and he gets – you know, nine or ten carries and four or five receptions, and the, they're high value targets. And you know, he ends up with a hundred total yards between both, and has an opportunity, you know, to house something like Chase Edmonds. I, exactly, I see him similar to Chase Edmonds, who whoo yes, yay preseason played ten of thirteen snaps with the first team. Chase Edmonds did uh, ran a route on seven of eight dropbacks for Tua. Yep, um, Tua yes. Tua targets. He he nice. had two of targets. Uh, one of the headlines that I don't think is going to get brought up in the tight ends today that I'll bring up now is the, I don't know, elimination of Mike Gesicki from the offense. Gesicki yes. played a long time in this game. If you listen to the comments from head coach Mike McDaniel, it was very clear that Gesicki is frustrated and does not want to cause headlines. He just said, look, I need the reps. It's a new position for me. He's a been a pass catching tight end. He is now a blocking tight end. Yeah, don't who, draft him. Who will get a few targets? But I'm saying this because if you look at the offense, Chase Edmonds has a role now being carved out for him, and it's being taken away from a place that had targets last year. We talked about this. Like I looked up the formations that teams ran, like two tight end sets. Miami was ahead of everybody by a huge margin. Last year it was Gesicki, and it was some of these other tight ends. That's not the system they're going to run this year. Chase Edmonds should be able to absorb a lot of what the tight end position was getting. The The Dolphins last year were second in targets shared to the tight end position. Yeah. So that that's going to – and they were 28th in target, target share to the running backs. Like, that's going to flip. I do not think Chase Edmonds will have massive volume. I think he will be the efficient – Chase Edmonds that we've seen in Arizona when he's healthy and on the field where you're going to need that storyline that you gave from James Cook where he's making efficient um you know bigger plays in the passing game you know how many total carries do you have Chase Edmonds down for I believe it's 188 is what I have him That's down for on fair. the season yeah it's more about the high what's leverage the, opportunities what's the name that you just gave him Kyle He's like Diet Camara. Diet Camara. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I kind of like that. Mm, delicious. Yeah, um, we're, and, we're, and, le and less calories. Is that stevia or? Again, for everything for Chase Edmonds is he's not in the dead zone. Like if, if Chase Edmonds were a dead zone running back going in the fourth, it would be a harder tale to tell yourself to get all aboard. But where he's going yeah, in the they, eighth round uh, in your Oh, he's got to be moving up after Big Jason talked I, about him. I, I've, uh, we'll, we'll see. I've been doing a lot of drafts this weekend. And I've been sad to see him go in the sixth round. Yeah, we're seeing Allen Robinson creeping like up, Like over and over this weekend. It's, I'm, it's, and I, I'm st if you need a running back in the sixth, I, I'm No, I'm fine, fine with, with him uh, uh, there. It, okay. You know, like you said, if he, he's not a fourth-round value, but – um, sixth, the opportunity cost is still there for him. One more running back situation worthy of discussion because, you know, Miles Sanders has missed some time. Kenneth Gainwell uh, has, I think, been talked about a lot more than Boston yep. Scott. But Boston Scott is just, if there's a tagline for that movie, it's, He's always there. Yeah, Boston Scott, he, if he didn't catch the game, he started for Philadelphia. He was... How, he was a workhorse running back. I think he got like 10 carries just right off the bat to start the game, including some goal line uh, attempts as well. And as I'm watching this going, oh, they must have sat Kenneth Gainwell. He must not be playing in this game because he's been banged up a little bit. But after Boston Scott is done, here comes Kenneth Gainwell. That, And this is not a complete, you know, we got to bail out on Kenneth Gainwell. But this has to be a data point in your analysis of the Philadelphia running backs that Boston Scott is very valuable for this team. He was the guy, like, 
all the all the points uh, over the off season of me trying to be like, I think Miles Sanders can be okay because Boston Scott got all these carries close to the goal line. Maybe he's just going to get them again. They they like him, and it's it's a it is a he's little good. Bit, yeah, that's the thing. It's he's a, a he's a good running back. I think. <laughs> Kenny Gainwell, if given the he's <laughs> good. <laughs> it's just like I, w- I wanted to call him a good little. He was on back, pace they- for 151 carries last year, from week eight through 17. Through so that's a lot on 40 something percent of snaps. Yeah, that second half of the year stretch, he was five times a running back two last year. He's involved. He is good, and the he exists not to help you win anything, but to just destroy my hopes and dreams of Kenny Gainwell. <laughs> This Who, is, I think it's Buffalo. Sure. You've yeah, got Josh Allen running be. the ball, and you've got Jalen Hurts running the ball, and then you've got three running backs, Gainwell, Sanders, Scott. It's, yeah, that's it's fair. tough. All right, wide receiver position. Uh, can we control this? Oh, no, we're back. <laughs> Fire up the engines. The hype train <laughs> on Do- Romeo Dobbs. He's dobbing on these fools. I mean, it's his fault. Six for 69, two touchdowns on 12 targets through two preseason games, by the way. The Very dude's nice. balling Jordan out. Love has not looked that bad. He's, he's, Let me, he, he has looked – he's made some plays. He's all right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, none, none, of, none of his preseason work has come from Aaron Rodgers. It's worth, it's worth noting that. Aaron Rodgers has talked down the rookie wide receivers, said we need our best 11 on the field, which basically is not the rookie wide receivers. It does include both running backs. These are these are kind of comments he's made. He's talked up Alan Lazard as the true number one for this team. That being said, you know, it's like we've seen we've seen the Sammy Watkins experiment. Yes. We've seen it for years. We've seen it with Patrick Mahomes. Like he's the starter. Sammy is, yes, not he. Dobbs. But if you're late in your draft, like I don't you're know. You're not you're you're seeing the ADP Hop on the train. Uh, Matthew Betts this morning, underdog league, eighth round pick, Romeo Dobbs. <gasps> wow. Yeah, don't, so, don't do that. So they're, they're, that's the hype train. Like that's, people, that makes it not fun. People want a piece of the. Yeah. If the hype train goes too fast, you start to get worried about yeah, derailing. A little and nauseous. Dying. Yeah. Um, so is he, has he been impressive? Yes. Does yes. it mean that this year is his year? No. It doesn't mean that the second half could be. Maybe that's the question for me about Dobbs is if you can get him very late and you're wanting to hold on to a hold on to him. I think eventually he plays Sammy Watkins out of the job. But even then, again, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers with rookie wide receivers. Part of my entire argument for Alan Lazard is that that just it doesn't happen. Even the guys who become legendary Green Bay Packers do nothing just with Aaron Rodgers as a rookie. Just draft MVS. Do that instead. Oh, yes. Draft Marquez valdez Scantling yes. instead of the Romeo Dobbs. The starter? Yes. Are you crazy? For for the Chiefs. And it, because it, if he's going in the eighth, he's being drafted ahead of MBS. Yeah, I, th- I think really it's it's more of a a dynasty outlook for Dobbs where you say, sure. okay, okay, this guy, you know, when, when draft season came around, like right after the NFL draft, Dobbs was a guy you were scooping up off of waiver wires once your rookie uh, draft was done. Now you go, okay, he looks talented. He's gotten a lot of buzz. He, he might have a future, but it's not for redraft leagues. It's not a guy that I think you should be drafting there. Where, whereas a guy that you should be drafting, I think, in, in redraft leagues and certainly in dynasty leagues, who is just – I can't believe how left for dead, uh, which is the phrase for today, left sure. for dead. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Jahan Dotson. Oh, yes. That's because the Shroud of War from Carson Wentz covers <laughs> over all. That's good. I mean, if you are around the I, Wentz I really mustard like cloud. That. But, yeah, I was going to jump back into the Chiefs. We'll do that in a minute. But Jahan okay. Dotson, yeah. you brought it up. He's played with the starters in two wide receiver sets in both preseason weeks. Same snaps, same routes as Terry McLaurin. He's going to be the starter opposite of Terry McLaurin. He is going to have opportunities. And uh, is the wide receiver 63 in average draft position. Ridiculous. So, again, you compare him to Romeo Dobbs upside, please take the first-round rookie. 100%. Like, essentially, if you're a first-round rookie in the NFL draft, you should, be on a, you should be on the redraft radar. You should be drafted at some point. And it, the, the fall of him in dynasty rookie drafts was, you're like, well, that's kind of weird. And that's just... That's just magnified here as we've gotten into the redraft leagues. So I'm I'm with you guys that I'm 
very happy to draft Dotson at his ADP with with full confidence. Yeah, Dot Dotson in our dynasty startup draft that I'm doing right now. Dynasty startup was a 13th round pick behind guys like KJ Osborne. He's a first round draft yeah. pick. So uh, back to the Chiefs wide receivers. MBS, we talked about it. 21 out of 25 snaps with the starter. Saw five targets. That's not a surprise to me that he's the starter. But he looks good, and he should be. You should be considering him in your drafts. Juju didn't play, but I'm I'm very confident. After, especially after this game, I know Juju did not play, but MVS looks good. Uh, he had a, a maybe a crossing route. I can't remember the the exact route, but he broke completely free, and Patrick Mahomes missed him. It would have been like a 50, 60 yard touchdown. Like MVS is a speed guy, and he's going to hit. A lot of big touchdowns this year. Sky Moore rotated with the starters, but played behind superstar <laughs> Justin Watson, who <laughs> seems to, at least in preseason, uh, have a role in this offense. As does, uh, is it Fortson? Who is the yeah, tight end that scored end. twice? Was it, it was, Fortson? Yep, Jody Fortson. So you hear obviously Kelsey's there, and then you hear about Noah Gray, but then here's Jody Fortson with two touchdowns. I do think you, that is a little bit of a hint of what the Andy Reid offense with Patrick Mahomes is going to be like this year. Spread around. I think it's going to get spread around a lot. That's why I've been hesitant about an MBS or a Juju or any of these guys where that's not named Travis Kelsey. And it's why I was nervous about non-Tyreek options in the years past is because they just haven't done anything because you can't count on it. You know, you never knew when it was a Byron Pringle week or Demarcus Robinson or somebody else or a Watkins week, right? So, you know, is Justin Watson going to rain on everybody's parade if they're celebrating the Juju or the Sky Moore situation? It's going to rain gold, rain gold down on on fantasy brilliance. Uh, look, this is the, what? not even a regular sentence. Uh, he he has gotten buzz all camp long. He has a role in the preseason and almost everyone projects him right now that I've seen to make the 53 man roster. Oh, Justin, one of the first steps step of one, success. J Justin Watson is not going to be someone you draft, but he is someone that will slow the progress of a rookie like Sky Moore. I can agree with that. Uh, George Pickens flashed in week one. Yeah, he is. He continues. I will say this, and, and, and I don't say it lightly because I don't like saying it at all, but Chase Claypool's made plays in – the preseason so far. Excellent. I just don't want him to be forgotten when you hear George Pickens hype, Deontay Johnson. Claypool is still gigantic. That's never been something that, he, yep. you know, it, it's just a quality that he's possessed. He's a humongous human being, comes down with contested catches. And on top of that, like the, the George Pickens ascension yeah. is he may be an outside starter, which has so far through the preseason – Chase Claypool has played a ton in the slot, and he's uh, you get that big slot role like Cooper Cup, gigantic big dude plays in the slot. You get a rookie quarterback if if Kenny Pickett takes that job, and you get the slot wide receiver on the easier DB matchup. He like Chase Claypool is interesting in I, that role. I that whole wide receiver room because you have Trubisky. Maybe later a rookie. It's going to be a little scary. Christian Kirk has had massive volume in yes. the preseason. Eight targets on 22 routes. This past week. Like, it, uh, Kirk at wide receiver 46. Lock that in. Like That's very interesting. And then some tight end storylines. Uh, we'll throw them out there real quick. Big time alert here. Uh, there's been some questions about it all offseason, but Albert Aguabanum, who I took with the very final pick in our last mock draft, I mean, in week one, he played the whole first half, didn't see a target. In week two, all the starters rested. He rotated in and played into the fourth quarter. They drafted Greg Dulcich, which tells you a little bit of like their plans for this offense. They also have uh, – what's their the other tight end that has been very impressive? Do you remember the name? Not Jake Butt. Not Jake Butt. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Let, me, let me pull it up here. You guys can talk about uh, it. I will say that I saw some uh, reporters tweeting out that they think the reason he was playing deep into the game was to get reps on blocking, that he still needs to work on his blocking, and you really need uh, game reps for that. So it's, you know, I don't, I don't want to overblow, you know. I don't know. 
it's one of those things where we talk about it a lot. We, like we're we're analyzing. We just did a whole show on this preseason. There's a lot of nuggets, important things to take away. But we have to remember, especially when it comes to who's playing what amount of game, these coaches are making decisions based on whatever they think is best for how to get the next step out. These aren't like punishing. I don't think he was being punished. Well, Hackett said he needed reps. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. He needs blocking reps. That's sure, what the maybe not discipline, but that's a if, that's a you're not ready. It's a bad sign. Yeah, I mean, so you got you got Albert O doing that. Meanwhile, uh, Brevin Jordan, second, I believe second year player, tight end for the Houston Texans, twenty two of twenty nine snaps where where Davis Mills played, ran a route on sixteen of seventeen Davis Mills dropbacks. That stat from a uh, good friend of the show, Graham Barfield, like. Brevin Jordan, to me, is... I loved him coming out, yeah, like, and they don't have a lot it, of targets. Exactly. I, th I think Brevin Jordan needs to be on your... May maybe you're not taking him as a punt tight end, but if Brevin Jordan comes out week one and gets five or six targets, you need to pay attention. And then uh, Isaiah likely scored twice for the Ravens. Uh, he had 100 yards. So eight receptions, 100 yards, a touch... Uh, I thought he had two touchdowns. Am I wrong? Was it just one? I don't remember. Against Arizona as the Ravens won their 22nd consecutive preseason game. The, uh, the Arizona Falcons? You were not a fan of the Cardinals no. black on black. No. Get it out of here. I mean, they shouldn't have gone black on black. They should have been wearing the white tops with the black helmet if you want to give those fine. black helmets a shot. That would be fine. But it's just nothing about that team looks like the Cardinals. I, agree. I completely agree with that. They looked like the uh, Deion Sanders Falcons. Exactly. Like the vintage uh, old logo Falcons. And, and I, then, I love variant uniforms. I love all those things, but that was that was not it. That was I feel boring like they, and not the Cardinals. I feel like they took the cheap way of updating the look. They didn't go to the, back to the drawing board and really refresh it. They just said, hey, let's get some black helmets on and confuse Mike Wright. Yeah. They they, they pulled an intern from Hot Topic <laughs> oh my and gosh. said, hey, uh, revamp these for us. And they said, okay. Did you, uh, did what you, about, what was your review? What about black? <laughs> what about black? <laughs> did you like them, Jason? I thought they were fine. I love the helmet I, uh, by itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do yeah. agree it looks like the Falcons, but I'm not opposed to, you know, look, sometimes when things are new, people just want to go, ah, I like it the old way. Oh, it oh, is that Mike? Because he's, oh, he's, such a, he's the grandpa of the show. Get, get off my lawn is he's what I'm hearing, Mike. At all. He's the grandpa. That's how you, you know it's bad because I want all the new stuff. <laughs> Do you re Really important follow-up question. Do you like the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, uniforms? Just overall? Yeah, overall. I mean, I'm fine with them. Okay. All right. Anything else? They don't look like the Falcons. That's how are the sure. Deucers doing over there? Oh, doing yeah. Great. I've got the helmet right here on the, on the YouTube. There's the... <laughs> It's the See, Cardinals exactly. helmet. Exactly. Yeah, there it is. Um, all right. Well, we're done for today. Sleepers, breakouts, busts, value episodes coming this week. Megalobowl.com, ultimatedraftkit.com. It's the time. Rawr. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.